Welcome to another episode of the Dentology Podcast, where we discuss the business of dentistry. In this podcast series, we'll be discussing all the non-clinical aspects of dentistry, from goodwill values, finance, marketing, how to buy and sell a dental practice mindset, through to where you can invest your money in team management issues. My name is Andy Acton, and I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Strevens. Let's jump straight into it. So with each episode of Dentology, we always try and drop some um, business nuggets that people can take away and, and, and use. And today, Kevin Rose um, delivered big time. Uh, we had a conversation about going into a challenging economic environment and the sorts of things that dentists and practice owners can do um, to help themselves through the coming months. And he dropped some real gold around the sorts of areas that, that people can focus on. Um, they're not particularly expensive things to do but they can have a real impact and some subtle changes to the things that got three people through covid um will get them through what may be a recession coming down the line so yeah and no, a great episode today and i'm sure um, i'm sure you take a lot from it so welcome to our latest episode of dentology the business of dentist podcast and we are delighted i'm joined today by kevin rose i'm flying solo again today because my co-host and partner in crime chris is unwell he's suffering the dreaded man flu so hopefully he's going to be back with me for the next episode let's hope so so kevin kevin is a founder of rose and co um dealing with dental leadership coaching websites and so much more welcome kevin how are you doing i'm very very well andy how are you and you're doing a great job on your own, I see. So you're surviving. Oh, good, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Normally, I I look to my right, and and Chris is sitting there, but 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 not today, <laughs> not today. So you founded Rose and Co back in 2009, um, and to yes. start with, genuinely well done because you're still in business 13 years later, and the yeah. attrition rate yeah, of new thing, businesses. Yeah. Yeah, the attrition yeah. rate of new businesses is so high. I don't think quite yeah. often business owners get congratulated for doing what they do. You know, running a small business yeah. is not easy as dental practice owners know. So to kick off, well done. Um, I mean, dentistry is a profession. It's fascinating, the people, the technologies, the opportunities. But before we get into the dentistry and, and your contribution mm. and what you do, um, going back to the beginning, before that, what, what was your childhood like? Where did you get brought up? Siblings? What, what, what did it look like? Oh, crikey, yeah. Uh, older brother, who now does something that involves signing the official secrets act, so I can't talk about that. Um, oh, wow. and, um, oh grew that's up, a real grew hang up in... of that, isn't there? Everybody wants to know the answer to that now, don't they? <laughs> yeah, I wish I could say what he does, but I can't, because I don't really know myself. <laughs> uh, he's, he was a sort of technical one, um, and I was the more sort of... Uh, I suppose slightly more entrepreneurial one. So I, I remember having, what, I had three paper rounds... Um, job on a Saturday morning cleaning cars, uh, just so that um, I got a chance occasionally to drive the owner's Lotus Esprit. So this is what late eighties. Nice. Um, and yeah, very, very, very happy, very content. Um, was it? A, was it? A, was it a white one? And did you feel like James Bond? It was. It was exactly oh. that one. I mean, it, oh. that, that whatever, whatever, mate, whatever series that was. Um, the white one with the big red letters, yeah, and yes. uh, uh, that was my treat. If I got the rest of the car fleet washed on a Saturday morning, I got to sit and uh, occasionally wash or do the leather on the Lotus, and thought it was James Bond for about five minutes on a Saturday morning. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. So, where 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 do you hail from? Where's your where's your family home? So Leicestershire, uh, which is where we've moved right. back to now, um, as our parents have all got older. And um, mm. but on the way there, I think probably we lived in Cheltenham, Mrs. Rose and I, for a number of years. Um, maybe go back there again one day because that's a great place. Um, so uh, yeah, back home again, really. And that's that's part of what part of the attraction of moving back here was looking after family. Um, sure. And uh, and cycling as well because I'm sure you'll ask me what do I do. Well, most people know I ride. I ride. I do. A, I do a fair amount of cycling. And uh, yeah, you're you're an avid cyclist, mates, aren't you? Yeah, well, mates I still cycle with around here. Yeah, yeah. Which is cool. So obviously, Rose and Co is your your current incarnation and, and business. But you started that back in 2009, which was some while mm. ago now. But what was your what was your career mm. prior to that? What, what were you doing for work? So I I did uh, I worked in retail banking, uh, moving towards the business side. Um, did what was then, I suppose, arguably a degree a degree in banking, um, 
and um, that was all sort of done. You know, daytime I was doing sort of basic stuff, and at nighttime I was learning about international trade and letters of credit. It was quite, it was quite a contrast, but it, it, it got me interested. It got me interested in, um, I guess, the business side of things. And this was in the eighties and nineties when mm. I'm sure we'll come on to it. You know, the way people business the way it conducted itself was was very very different and and yeah that stuck with me um so yeah did that up until then moved into receivable finance um at sort of director level and then the credit crunch came along and by which point um i was ready to to escape so i did because what i'd signed up for wasn't really the organization i was working with at that point and i felt a little bit disconnected from uh, my values weren't really aligned with um, the organisation or what it was doing, so it was a good mm. excuse to to get out. Um, mm. I think quite yeah, often in tough happened. times, yeah, I think quite often in mm. tough times, it it can test businesses in terms of their values and behaviours, and when things are challenging, particularly kind of in the finance world when a credit crunch hits, quite often the yeah. way they behave and the way yeah. they support or don't support. Um, and they'll have their own business reasons for doing it, but it can leave you slightly uncomfortable in terms of how they, well, how they go they, about it. Yeah, you're right. And, and it, was, it was sort of 2008, but I think the writing was on the wall in terms of my disconnection from that organisation because mm. I increasingly realised it wasn't about helping people which is what I thought it was should be about. It was actually about helping yourself, and and I I, mm. I kind of lost interest in it. So um, escaped, yeah. and, you know. Mm. I think what's interesting this, is my my, my back yeah my, my background was in banking as well um, on on the business side, and something yeah. that struck me when I left and sort of bought my first business, which was back in two thousand, is just how good banks are at providing courses, support, and training. And lots of the training courses that we probably would have both been on, you just took for granted. And, and frankly, quite often, you know, you'd moan and groan about having to go on another course. But when you step outside that environment and you're a business owner, and, and this would apply to dentists as well, particularly on kind of clinical CPD, but also non-clinical courses, you have to pay for them yourself. And, and learning isn't cheap. And trying to find good courses to go on isn't easy. And I remember when I left the bank, I, I did probably didn't appreciate just how good they were uh, in providing mm. some bare bones core mm. training that I still carry with me today, you know, on kind of you know, communications yeah. and interpersonal yeah. skills side of things. Yeah, yeah. likewise. I mean, I remember doing some stuff with the, the IOD. We were on sort mm. of pro, some sort of program there for a number of years. Um the communications things as well, but but also um, a big part of what I was doing was was um, sort of lending money to, to to small businesses. So you got to see everything, you know, in terms of the types of business. Ironically, I probably saw everything other than dental practices because <laughs> you know the, the, need, the need for credit in terms of the way we did it wasn't mm. relevant. Um, but it does give you a real width of perspective in terms of um, seeing businesses through various phases. I mean, by then, I guess, through what at least two major economic cycles. Um, and also experience as well, because um, I remember I, I was tasked with setting up a, um, a sort of brownfield site for, for a new office. And then we bought a division of a uh, of a bank, a specialist division of a bank, which was shoehorned into the office where I was. So I had to learn overnight how to uh, not only how to make incompatible computer systems talk to each other, um, but also actually get incompatible people from different <laughs> from different organisations to talk to each other. Uh, and it was quite quite a learning thing um and there's some conversations i've had with the, with the chief executive of that organization which have stuck with me and i still apply in terms of how i guess what the the person at the top actually does mm. or rather doesn't do yeah you know yeah um because it's largely about thinking and i guess that's the big the big the first thing i really saw when i when i looked at dentistry was you know the main doer is also in any business, um, rather the main thinker happens to be the main doer. 
Mm. And you don't get that normal, normally. Um, obviously, there's, there, there are some exceptions, but it's extreme in dentistry, I think. Um, yeah. That's yeah. the contrast between... It only managed dentistry. That contrast between being the thinker, but also the doer, and mm. being in the right state of mind to go from looking at occlusion one second... Um, there you go. It's like with dentists. Like we know we're talking about dentistry there, and the occlusion and bite or whatever, right? One minute, and then like making, you know, really important decisions about the business, which are not urgent, or they shouldn't be urgent, mm. but they come. They, they often become urgent. So, oh yeah, yeah. Like that's oh, you're having to jump those. from from yeah, you're having to jump from micro to macro. Very, Absolutely. very quickly, yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. the bit that leaves lots of dentists uncomfortable is the, the bit that takes place within their surgery with a patient in the chair. They're highly skilled and highly trained for those environments. When you come out and somebody says, we've had a cyber attack on our website. Yeah. Yeah. What do I do? But they're also, yeah, they're also, highly, in, but they're also highly in control. Mm. And, and this is the irony to me, Andy, which is that Clinically, and, and, and rightly so, if you're going to draw in, uh, drill into my, my jawbone, I want you to be absolutely in control of every aspect of that, totally. Um, however, they're not the moments that, that I finish up unpicking because that's the clinical part of, of the job. Yeah. The bits I get involved in is, is that because it's a very controlled environment, but actually outside of the clinical environment, the last thing you really need to be doing is being in control of how the team talks to each other, how we talk to our patients, how we answer the telephone, how we organise ourselves, structure ourselves. So it's getting that balance right between um, dentists wanting to be in control, which is a, which is a an admirable weirdness, right, of, of dentists. And, and if, if, if I can say that, dentists are weird to that extent that they need to be in control clinically. But if you, as I'm sure you know, Andy, if you run a business with that same level of control, then you'll get, um, you'll get paralysis in terms of decision making. Um, and you don't get the best out of people um, by just telling them what to do. And then when it goes wrong, well, they'll say, well, you told us what to do. Mm. And, and the problems with patient service, customer service, and all that stuff, it requires thinking. It requires mm. thinkers. Mm. And, and also, as a, to... as a, yeah, and, and I was going to say, and I think as a practice owner, um, typically they'll still be spending two, three, you know, sometimes four days a week clinically in their surgery. So if you haven't empowered other leaders in your business to make decisions Absolutely. while you're busy with the patient – you, your your business is, is stagnant. It's stagnant. For every moment you're in a surgery seeing a patient, no business decisions to be made. And that's not Correct. that's not great. Correct. That's not great at all. It's not healthy. It's, it's, it's not healthy. And so of course the, the, the and, and then you see it, the temptation is when when the boss does get a chance to talk to his or her team, um, it's very tempting because of the frustration to say, right, do it like this. Mm. Um but you can't tell someone in advance, how to, for example, respond to a particular patient who we don't yet know the name of right now, or the time of day, or the weather, or whatever, who stood at the desk saying, I don't understand this treatment plan, or turns up late, what mm. do I do? And so this is where dentistry requires people to think. But there is another double whammy, of course, in that um, nursing um, is, is about process. Mm. I'm not saying nurses don't think, but of course they do. But nursing is about process. Um, so you, you are recruiting process-driven people um, and requiring them, when not in your direct control, to think. Now, that's, mm. that's a complicated you know, um, thing to, want to, to, to unpick. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, that's... Absolutely. I love it. I love yeah. doing that. That's a big part of my job. So, and understanding that, that is key, you know, just, just to be able to get your head around that. Then you can start picking it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, you, you, you finished up in banking. By your own admission, you didn't deal with many dentists just by nature of the work that you were doing in the bank. You started your business from your kitchen table when your, your yeah. best mate, who happened to be a dentist, came to you and said, yeah. can you fix my dental practice? What, yeah. what, did, what did fix mean? And is that a common problem? What, what, going back to that very beginning, that very first client, what, what did that dentist mean when they said, "Can you fix my practice?" <clears throat> well, 
I mean, first of all, I said no, by the way, when he asked me, because I thought, well, I don't know anything about, I don't know, you know, as it happened, I'd seen my own children far younger at the time in that dental chair because this uh, dentist was also my my family dentist mm. and, and, and good friend. Um, what, what I discovered fixing was probably not what he thought fixing was. And, and it goes back to what we were saying. It was a case of putting the right structures in place, the right systems, the right processes, the right type of thinking uh, about the right things in the right depth at the right time so that we do get this balance right between the clinical world and and, and running the business and to, to put that into context um unbeknown to me they at the time were thinking about going for investors in people right. um and for some reason i didn't realize they were actually tracking on with getting the the, the, the assessments and they did and i got this phone call surprise phone call from the manager one afternoon saying, oh, just to let you know, we've had the the IIP inspection. Um, I know, fantastic. Yeah, and we've passed. Um, but they're also going to put us forward for gold as well, which is like, you know, I don't know what you know, but I'm sure you know about IIP. It's the top level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and people can probably pick hairs in the, uh, you know, poke, poke sticks at the, the concept of investors in people. But it, as an external accreditation to are you looking after your people, um, it, it is a useful one. Yeah. So when I when I realised that what I'd learnt outside of dentistry, directly and indirectly through my own experiences, was in demand, perhaps unknowingly, but in demand in the mm. dental profession. And this is about a year in now at this point. And I thought, okay, well, this is you can add some value here, right? You know, de- de- better. Better teams, having better conversations, being a bit more efficient, having better conversations with each other, better conversations with their patients, um, isn't a bad thing when we're trying to help people have slightly healthier mouths and teeth and gums, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and also timing so, was good because this was still coming out of the back of the recession. So particularly for private practices, they were needing to recover the pain of the last couple of years. Yeah, and, and, you know, I seem to remember it was fashionable at the time to have, you know, a, a dental boutique and it was all very sort of glamorous and, and LED lights um, and a lot of people sort of fairly highly geared um, who perhaps needed to, perhaps as we're seeing again now, you know, think about what do your patients really want? Um, mm. Because I think healthcare doesn't go out of fashion, but our, how we how we spend our money does, does change. And, and I think that's yeah. probably what... We'll see at the moment in the in the current are we in recession or not in recession, but you know it certainly looks like it and feels like it to me. Yeah, I think it is, and and I think uh, you know we'll, we'll kind of come on to, to your thoughts about the economy in a minute, but I just think that you know on the the cusp of a recession, and I think it's probably a technical point that means we're not in recession, but we're likely to go into one. Yeah, looking at the the buoyancy that we're seeing coming through COVID and out the other side, particularly for private practices, I think it is important to make sure you are prepared um, for going into a more difficult, challenging economy. But perhaps we'll come on to that later and I'll get your, your thoughts yeah. and tips on, yeah. on what to do what to do there. But no, it's very interesting. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we met at um, Dentinal Tubal's Congress, um, which is, is always good fun. Drew Shah, who curates that, it's, it's a remarkable event. And there was a sweet moment when I turned up as Where's Waddy and I saw you as a care bear. It was a, it was a lovely moment. It really was. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if we should be telling the world about that really, Andy, but, but we've done it. So yeah, I was. I was, was a pink hair. I was going to say that. I was the, a the, pink the, hair. The, <laughs> I was a pink hair, but would, perhaps you can explain that everybody was in fancy dress. It wasn't just us, right? There was, they, it they was were, a fancy dress. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the the pictures are all over social media. But as an event, the the congress is yeah. about empowering people, helping the profession to thrive, and, and lifting people up. And and Drew does a great great job at doing that. Um, yeah, I see that there's quite a lot of crossover with you and what you do with your services for clients as well. In that, a lot yeah. of it is around people and getting principals in good shape so they can empower their yeah. their teams. Where yeah. where where did that come from? You kind of explained what you did with that first dental client of yours, but you you yes. also have a real interest in people. Yeah, well, um, 
I do, I do, and I think um, you know. You mentioned tubules. The thrill, the thrill with the tubules crowd is that there's a lot of like-minded people with very similar and, 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 and shared values, um, mm. which is why I think it why I think it works. Um, where does the interest in, in, in uh, people come from? Um, crikey, do you know? I think actually. It probably comes from the fact that, um, and I'm no, I'm probably no martyr when I say this, right? But when you've been through a bit of nonsense yourself in your life, uh, what you realise is um, a good way of getting out of your own head is to be helping other people, and and that mm-hmm. to me is is has been part of my own journey, if you like, um, which is to it, it really is very fulfilling and rewarding seeing people. Um, it's going to sound a bit profound, if you like, but wake, waking up, waking up for the first time. Um, I was lucky enough at the at the, the Congress of the week to to have a very um, small little group of, 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 of dentists who decided um, they didn't want to do pig's heads or clinical stuff. They wanted something very different. And, yeah, I mean, the, the feedback from, from that particular chap that came along was, just opened his mind, opened his eyes mm. to, to different perspectives, different insights, which leads to different thoughts and ideas. And yeah, I mean, it, it's it's great, Andy. I, 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 I get a kick out of it, just seeing other people develop develop and grow. And and I don't just leave that to other businesses. Um, our, um, our website and digital team, I, I was pondering over the summer, where to go next with that um, in that there is more scope for growth because um, there's only one of me, thank goodness you might say. Um, and I, I think I find it quite hard trying to do, get other people to do what, what I do directly, right? It's, it's a very personal thing. Whereas yeah. we can develop the, the website and, and the digital part of the business. It's, it's, about, it's far more scalable. So I was playing around with the numbers. Well, what, let's try and do this by 2020, whatever. And I just, frankly, I just couldn't get excited by it, right? And then I thought, well, what would I say to me? <laughs> what, if I was coaching me on the subject, the question would be, well, what, what, what do you actually get a kick out of, Kevin? I go, well, I like, I like developing people. We'll do that then. So yeah. in the end, it's an arbitrary figure, but I've actually got this little personal um, goal which is by the end of 2025 to to have launched uh, ten couriers in in digital marketing out of our offices up in in, in Dundee. And frankly, if they all finished up working for us in in three years time, great. If not, great. But I think the results then follow, and then we will do a quantity of digital things and all the rest of it. But the point is, you put in other people first and. To me, that feels good. The team understand it. We talk to people about that. They, they, they seem to get that. And that's a shift in thinking about business, which it's certainly not, I don't own that concept. But again, if you look outside of dentistry, which is really, I suppose, what I, I really want to encourage people to do more of, to look outside of dentistry, see furthest, Right, see further than to other people. Um, be more giraffe-like, which I think literally means he who sees furthest. Right, the word giraffe. I, I, someone mm-hmm. told me that I can't remember where or why. But so look further outside than others, and you will see there is a shift in in the way businesses are operated, or rather how they're led and what their focus is. And this takes me right back to why I got out of the the financial world was because it was always about, it became rather, it became about um, not serving others, serving yourself. And to me, to serve others is 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 a gift because it's it's just rewarding in its own right. And then the results follow. And I think in, in healthcare, we have to remember that if we look after the people that we're trained to to serve um, directly and indirectly, whether you're a clinician or, or a supporting member of the team, the results follow. And I, I I really believe that, that if you do the right thing, 
the results will follow. And businesses that have failed to do that historically, they've made the results the priority, um, that they just fail sooner than any other business. And don't get me wrong, that is not to say we don't need money. We need money. We need to make money. We need the KPIs and all those things because that's the fuel that goes in the tank that, that turns the wheels. But the question is, yeah. wh where are you going? Wh where, where are you heading? Um, and that doesn't have to just be about more. I, I believe we also need to do better, and you can do both. You can do more of, but you can do better things at the same time. Uh, and again, that isn't just charity or, or sustainability. Um, better things can be... Um, you know, really making a difference in other people's lives, right? Mm. It sounds profound, but if you're a trained clinician or, or, or a hygienist therapist um, or an orthodontic therapist or a nurse, you, you've got the ability to have a huge impact on someone's life mm. every single day, many, many times. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, I agree. And I, I think sometimes when... If you do that, the results follow. Of course they will. Yeah. And, and I think if you, when you see um, dentists, and, and I tend to talk to quite a lot towards the end of their career, it's always quite sad when they've kind of started to fall out of love with that impact that you've just described, where they, what they do is life-changing. It really is life-changing. Um, yeah. And that yeah. that impact that you're talking about with your clients, they're having that on a on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis with their patients. And how many thousands yeah. of people out there have got a different outlook on life, either pain free or an enhanced smile or better function or whatever it, it might be yeah. as a result of yeah. seeing the dentist. And it's easy to to not see those things because we like you say, you know, be the giraffe look 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 further yeah. and yeah. I, I think that dentistry is great but because it's a, a specialist area and you need to be qualified quite often the same people um stay just within that profession so it's rare that you get outside thoughts and influences coming in and i think you know what you're describing is is valuable but it does require dentists to go and seek seek information outside of the profession because it's a well supported profession but going outside can can be so valuable and interesting. It, it is well supported, and and but it's also quite narrow, you know, narrow in its thinking. Mm. And, and, and say looking outside, there there is a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn from the past, and even right now, there's a heck of a lot to learn. And that's a big a big part of my job. Um, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> I don't have all the answers, Andy. But I'm, I'm I'm quite good, I think, at getting people thinking, and, and, and maybe yeah. just asking questions that you, you don't ask when it's when you're running your own dental practice you know i mean I, I have someone asks me questions tough questions that make me think and mm. it doesn't mean they've got the answers but if, if someone's going to hold you to account when you're at the top of the the, the tree if you like and, and, and challenge you um yeah, the, the, the 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 danger is we just carry on doing the same old and um although einstein was it's never proven he actually said this, but you know the quote, right? You can't kind of doing the same thing and expect different results. Well, you won't. Yes. <laughs> you just, just won't. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> no, no. So could, could, could you just talk me through and remind us what are the services that, that you offer kind of on the leadership side of things? So you obviously got yeah, offer, um, yeah. leadership so, coaching services. So the coaching side, um, thanks to um, COVID when, and, and Zoom became acceptable, um, is is a big part of what I do. So I have um, a group of clients uh, in what's called Club Connect. <coughs> Excuse me, and um, I have a one to one meeting with with all of them during most months. I'll explain there's some exceptions to that, um, and that's um, I've got a client in Australia, uh, one in. Uh, Switzerland and then the rest all over the UK and that's a one-to-one -one coaching conversation that that same group of clients also look after each other so there is a ongoing conversation that they access each other and support each other we also physically meet three times a year in January May and September um, at the Belfry um, because one or two people like golf and everyone likes a spa hotel. So we, we meet there three times a year. And then we also have um, a monthly, if we're not meeting, a monthly chat, um, normally the second Wednesday of the month for an hour or so, 
just interim people checking in with it, with each other. So that's the coaching side, which is what I provide. Uh, people can then add on to that uh, training. So I go to practices and provide uh, training for dentists and dental teams in, in the main areas. So it's basically how to talk to each other, how to talk to patients, how to organise yourselves, teamwork, communication, telephone, reception, uh, patient dentist, uh, leadership. Um, and I also have a managers group as well, um, where I get a group of managers together on a, on a fairly regular basis. And again, to provide them with a width of perspective uh, and a depth of experience that you don't get sat on your own in your practice, you know, whether you're a manager or a, or a principal. But on top of that, <clears throat> one of my first clients um, was um, um, up, in, up in Edinburgh. Um, she sold her practice and uh, her husband, Andy, he, he's, he, is, he is unique in many ways, as I'm sure he'll tell you. But um, one of the ways is unique is he's a nerd, but he's also very creative. And I was looking for ages to find someone to partner with in terms of producing websites and digital things and social media. And I struggled to get both the creativity and the nerd. Um, and I'm saying this because this is his language as well, right? So we've got someone that makes very, very pretty things work uh, very well online. And then that team has now grown. And there are four of us then in that, in that office, uh, concentrating on uh, social media, social media training, uh, SEO, website updates, and um, and also occasionally analog things like printed things. You know, they still have their place. So, yeah, that's that's the whole gambit of what we do. Uh, although there, one other thing oh, I, I have started. Do. Yes, but we're also touching on because I find it fascinating sustainability. So I've been working right. with a very um, um, a very unwell known sustainability consultant inside of dentistry, outside of dentistry, one of the top guys who I happen to know from school, believe it or not. Um, and he works with huge, huge brands, global brands. And um, he also has a passion for helping out uh, dental practices. So we've just done a programme over the summer, which was helping practices get um, their own insights into a sustainability policy um, and things that they can do. Because it fits in with one of my things, Andy, which is there's stuff that you can do now. Do it now because you want to rather than because you have to. And I would say within a couple of years, um, someone will be knocking on your door asking to see a copy of your sustainability policy. Um, yeah, it's, and, and like you say, I think it's where it sits. Unfortunately, life being what it is, most people tend to do things at the last minute when they have to. You only need to look at the um, the timeline of when people submit their self assessment for tax return. You know, the the third thirty first of January. But if you, but again, if you if you look outside of, of dentistry, consumers are. Um, and I've seen some research on this, um, around 50% of your patients and the patients you want to have in your chair are belief-driven buyers, which means they will make a decision based upon whether you have a stance on controversial societal issues. Yeah. So 50%, that's, just, that's not just dentistry, that's across the whole economy. Mm. So people who are clear on things that matter, okay, are, are, are attractive by definition, to um, and also unattractive if you don't have that, that sense yeah. of purpose. Yeah, no, I yeah. agree. I, I, I agree. It's a, it's a, it's a great thing to be pushing. Um, I know that um, Lloyd's Bank and and some other large institutions. Um, are pushing it hard as well because we need a lot of noise and then people hear some of it. Yeah, and that can I go back to the banking days, Andy? Because I think you, you've just lit a touch paper there under me, which is that um, you know you, you you mentioned Lloyd's, and I think I can say this without being litigious. You know, a horse running down a high street, I don't think has anything to do with current accounts, right, or interest rates, or debit cards, or or, or pensions. Um, Yes, I know it's their logo, right? But but they don't have to just don't have to have it running down the beach, do they? The the, the reason the banks now have this um, imagery, and they have associations with life skills and training kids to get interviews and old people to use the internet. Um, the reason they're doing that, if you're cynical, 
It's because they screwed up 30 years ago and they lost the trust of the people that they're meant to serve. So this is your basics of Simon Sinek. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Well, we, we know what you do and, and we, didn't trust, we don't trust you anymore. So we have to reinvent why we do it. So mm-hmm. that's... If I was cynical, I'd say that's why the banks have, have shifted their marketing over the past few decades <clears throat> away from talking about checkbooks and your flexible friend and, and more about the, their alleged values and purpose. I, I personally think it's smoke and mirrors. But, um, and that's yeah. why the online yeah. banks, that's why the online banks clear up because they're not tarnished with the same brush. But you take that same principle, a profession, highly regulated, made some mistakes has lost the trust of its customers or is not trusted by many of its customers, well, there, there's dentistry, professional, mm. um, and um, has trust issues with huge parts of the of the population because people don't like going to the dentist. Not you personally, they always say, but generally dentists. Yep. Um, and what dentistry isn't doing is learning from the banks because dentistry talk, still talks about um, dentistry rather than why we do dentistry and, and that's a simple reversing the order um, of, of, of how you market and in what order you talk about things mm. yeah so, no, absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah some big some big issues in there some massive issues you you, you said in the past about um, the importance of long-term customer relationships and they require long-term planning um, obviously lots of things you just talked about there are, 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 are very long term you know sustainability is not going away you know we need to move down a path of improving over a number of years what's your experience on, on dentistry in terms of is, it, is there a wide, widespread acceptance to develop long term relationships and do things over a, a slower longer period of time you know dentistry is <coughs> talked about as a career yeah. which kind of implies it's yeah. going to spend a, a decent number of years and i'm thinking of it in the context of particularly social media um which is very yeah. every, everybody wants yeah. results yesterday everybody wants results tomorrow no, no one's prepared to uh, to make those long-term investments what, what's your what's your take on that well i think we talk about sustainable businesses and and you know there is sustainability as in the the uh, the impact we have on the earth resources but then there's being a sustainable business mm-hmm. and that is being brave enough to to look a little bit further and maybe just drop a few of the buy one get one free offers okay and actually focus on building a relationship that can last maybe 10 20 30 years and that's about taking your time. Um, that's about, um, you know, plant, planting seeds, not just trying to create, recreate the Chelsea Flower Show overnight. It takes time to build these things. Uh, the thing about relationships built upon trust is they've got to be built upon trust. And if your intention uh, when you see a patient is to get something out of it for you, um, People will pick up on that, you know, brain activity mirrors brain activity. It's as simple as that. So there's been some research done into this. So, you know, if, 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 if you see that patient as just an opportunity to, dare I say it, sell something, worst scenario, um, that's a huge turnoff for those customers, those patients, unless they've Mm -hmm. deliberately gone in just for that. No, I just want the transaction. Which of course exists. There are there are patients that want that, but mm. that's going to be hard work, isn't it? Constantly just trying to find the patient that wants the the quick fix. Um, oh yeah, and yeah. I don't see Absolutely. that. You know, you've got to you've got to be like you might look like a swan, but, but it's <laughs> <laughs> you know you're pedaling very fast. We, we, we all know what's going on the, un, under the water. Yeah. Jump into it's, jump, it's jump into the the other end of the timeline, you know, the, the long term bit, making it more short term. We're going we're going into a challenging economic environment. Uh, there's, there's there's no doubt, you know, that we we touched mm. on kind of you know are we or aren't we in a recession yet? Um, what would you say are, 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 are the areas of focus for for, for for dentists for practice owners? Where where do you think they should be paying their attention so they can weather those storms well? Um, well, I think previous economic cycles, are, I mean, again, the clues are there, Andy, you know, it, it's, it's, it's well documented. Um, 
And the, the danger, particularly at the moment when books are pretty full and demand outstrips supply for dentists, the, the temptation, of course, is to, is to turn down the marketing. Um, and yet, if you look at 2008, uh, and if you're, if you're unfortunate to remember prior previous recessions, uh, like I am, businesses that kept um, investing um, came out the other end stronger, or if not stronger, certainly not weaker. So I, I would say it's really important to keep marketing your business, even in a recession. Now, the question is, well, what do I market? Because are people going to be spending their um, their, their, their COVID their COVID furlough money? Um, no, they've already spent it. So maybe the days of the uh, you know the quick straight white smile um, spend may, maybe those maybe those will um, that that market will slow down. Healthcare being healthy means different things to different people, but I don't think health ever goes out of fashion with any economic cycle what no, does change in any economic cycle is we question probably not whether we spend money on staying healthy but where we spend our money on staying healthy so mm. i think it's even more important if if we are at the um, the cusp of of a slowdown or a downturn it's even more important to be to be clear to your existing patients and, and, and target ones about those key things and, and what you stand for, because people are going to be very cynical, I think, about the healthcare professional who's having a sale. No, no one wants a cheap dentist, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and having that sale mentality, that fire sale mentality, I think says the wrong message. Not if you're trying to build a relationship on, on, on trust. So, yeah, in summary, I would say keep investing. Keep investing in your marketing and your presence. Get the message better, though. The message needs to change when, when cash is tighter because people will question where they spend their money. We also need to be investing in our people because if you make today the best place for me to develop and grow in your business, the chances are I'll come back tomorrow and I'm less likely to be swayed by 50 pence an hour down the road. OK, so keep investing in your people, keep investing in your presence with your customers and don't forget your existing patients, the ones that have stood by you. So you've really only got to look at COVID to learn how to come out the other side of a recession, because the fundamentals yeah. of looking after your customers, looking after your people, investing and also investing in yourself as a leader so that you are being challenged or challenging yourself in terms of how you think and what you think about, because it's too easy just to go into, enter the practice at 8.30 in the morning, do a load of dentistry, go home at half past five and not speak to a soul. That's, mm. that's really important when people are vulnerable and scared that we, that we talk to, to yeah. our teams. And, and during COVID, sorry, it's a long answer to a short question, but I think, what, what COVID no, taught us was when you take away from dentists the ability to actually do what they're trained to do, the, the thing, the product, the service, the dentistry, what are you left with? And what the best did over that COVID period was they took care of their teams. They made mm -hmm. them feel safe. And they were looking to you for answers and inspiration and to feel safe. Because if you can't do what you do, all you can talk about is why you do what you do. The doing's gone. You're left with the, the why and the how. And we keep talking about that. I don't think that changes in a recession. Um, and and to, for the staff to feel safe and for customer, for, for patients to feel safe and, uh, yeah, to keep investing in, in the teams and your business. People will think I twice think, I think about they're great tips. Where yeah, I think I think they're great tips. And also they're things that are very practical and they don't cost a fortune. You know, people will be concerned about about their, their profit margins, but lots of those things about, you know, making sure your team feels special. Yeah, are they trained? Are you focusing on the right things? I think the thing you said about your message as well is really important because it may be that the message for lots of practices does need to change slightly. You know, what they've been marketing mm. for the last couple of years. Um, when you're going through a different climate, you may want to just, you know, subtly change your message to make sure that you uh, you you attract the right sort of patients and also appeal to your existing patients as well. 
Yeah, I mean, there, there are there are better ways of saying we're accepting new patients, you know, and there are better things. I know you are, okay, but there's better ways that you can put that. Um, and I think also, you know, we need to move on from, and maybe your website and your marketing needs to be a bit more robust than just saying we strive to deliver the highest level of dental care in a warm, friendly environment using the latest techniques. Because, frankly, no, no one knows what that means. And consumers are being more and more um, purposeful and biased towards organizations that they trust. Now, that doesn't change when we talk about the product being paying to someone to stick his or her hands in your mouth. Human nature doesn't change when you move it to dentistry. So again, look what other organizations are doing to maintain loyalty and, 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 Swipe and deploy it. You know, there's no, there's no shame in that. Um, mm. Someone else has made the mistakes. Learn from them. Don't make the same ones again. Mm. Yeah. No, I think that's good advice. Good advice. What does um, what does success look like for you and your clients? I think I've got an insight to for you when you were saying about making people better, making people happy, you know, mm. being of service. That seemed to be where you were at. But but, mm. but, but would mm. you would you define success beyond that and for your clients? Well, for, look, let, let's face it, everyone wants to have a profitable business, okay? And and um, you're at the pointy end of that. You, you're, you're buying and, and, and selling or on behalf of people, profitable mm. businesses. So, you know, we've spoke about this, the importance of that EBITDA and the multiples yeah. and all the rest of it. But I, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a double-edged coin. Um, so on one hand, yes, all those things need to be in place. But I, I think success comes when you can sleep at night as well. Right. It's as simple as that. So, you know, how you've made your money, how you've arrived at that bank balance um, is maybe not something I would have thought about when I was a teenager or early 20s. But, you know, wind forward a couple of decades and you realise how important it is. Yeah, definitely. So that that to me, yeah, it, it's it's how you get there, I think, that matters. Yeah. And out of all the things you do, you've got a very broad remit what's the one thing that makes you happiest if there's one thing you could wake up in the morning and do what, what what's the one thing that, that gives you ultimate joy for, for me personally or for, yeah, or for yeah, my clients yeah, for you for you personally for me it, it's seeing yeah. people it's seeing people wake up it, it's seeing right, people yeah. develop and grow it, it, it's 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 seeing that moment, and you even get it on Zoom, right? You know, you can get goosebumps even on Zoom meetings and one to ones. It's it's when the best meetings I have are when you realise we've not actually covered lots of topics. The to do list hasn't grown exponentially just because you know. Otherwise, you might feel that it's got to. But there's a couple of couple of things, and you get a message afterwards from your clients, and they go, "That was good, that." That was good, that. No one thought of it like that. And uh, you get it on courses as well, Andy. You get it on courses around about 11 o'clock, the first coffee break, right? And yeah. the quieter ones, the quieter ones that are really engaged, right? They're not saying as much, but you're watching them. Um, you look at the body language and, and all the rest of it. Um, the ones that come up to you at 11 o'clock and go, it's interesting, this. To me, that's... That gives, if that doesn't give you goosebumps, then then you know going to play golf or something, or, you know, do, do something different. But yeah, does that answer your question? Lovely. It's, I mean, it distills <laughs> down to quite a simple thing, doesn't it? Really, it's back to that thing, you know, be, be, being of service, and I'm sure that will resonate strongly um, with lots of people in dentistry as well. Well, we're a service profession, right? That's what we do. So you know, if, if I can be of service, helping people be of service, that's a nice little. Um, continuum so yeah Absolutely. i'm happy with that kevin we always um we could talk all day honestly i mean geez i know we've, mm. we've talked before and um, we've talked a few, a few times and every time we get to a point where i think well you know we need to you know is, is, is there another topic yes there is and that topic will save for another day because we could we could talk yeah for we could always talk about football as well we could talk about football cycling cars and the <laughs> 80s between, that'd be quite a good exactly. that's a whole nother series in there <laughs> But we always finish up by asking our guests the same two questions. And the first one we ask is, if you could be a fly on the wall in a certain situation, yeah. when, when would that be and who would you be with, given the opportunity? Yes, yes. Um, it's not been an easy year for me personally with my family, and uh, without going into too much detail, but uh, I, I, would, I would actually like to 
um, see the moment my parents met. Right? Oh, wow. I don't mean from, I don't mean from a sort of gushy point of view, but you know they had a great marriage and um, they were best mates and um, and I think they did a fairly good job and they looked after each other. So yeah, I'd like to have seen that moment. Maybe it was just their eyes met at the water cooler or whatever. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I would like to see that. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting whether it was whether it was a moment where they both it probably something, wasn't that dramatic. something happened or whether it was one of those things that kind of it it sort of smouldered over a period of time as opposed yeah, to it was a yeah. it was a spark. But now that's cute. That's cute. There and you if go. you could there if you go. could meet somebody, who would you like to meet given the opportunity? Easy. Now I've thought about this because I don't I don't want to meet anybody. And let me explain, Andy, right? Because <laughs> It's, it's too easy to go uh, Einstein, uh, Churchill, or, or whatever, right? I, I, I get that. But I've been lucky enough over the years to actually bump into occasionally a few of my own heroes, okay? And the thing is, it's always been a bit of an anticlimax. So I've now decided, <laughs> and the reason for that, re- I, I, I bumped into Stuart Pearce at Euston Station once. I said, oh, hello, hello uh, Psycho, because I was a Forest fan. Yeah. And uh, hello. But the thing is, he was just Stuart Pierce at that point. And yeah. what I'm getting is he wasn't the person scoring the penalties or that thing yeah. in Euro ninety six, right? When he when he when he redeemed himself. Yeah. So it's like if you and you want to go deeper and you say, Well, you could meet Brunel, right? And you say, Loving your work, Mr. Brunel, just to let you know your bridges are all still up and and your tunnels and, and I love your hat. But he, he would just be this bloke. So what I mean is, if you meet your heroes, I think it's a bit of anticlimax because the thing that you remember them for, that you fell in love with them for, is probably not the thing they're going to be doing when you bump into them. So, yeah, I would say, controversial or otherwise, um, I don't want to meet anybody. Well, Kevin, <laughs> we, we've, we, we've not had that answer before. I'm happy. I'm happy with my memories as they are of people. And let's not spoil it. So we, 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 we've not had that before. And I would be staggered if we have anybody, given that there's, <laughs> I, I don't know how many people to choose from on the planet, that somebody will say nobody. But I get your logic. I do understand your logic of <laughs> it, it, it probably wouldn't necessarily deliver. <laughs> Kevin, it's been brilliant. So, yeah, it's been, I mean, it's, it's, spoiler alert, you, you, you sent these two questions in advance. Everything else is, is just you hitting me. Um, so I thought about that one and thought, well, yeah, I could go really deep and say, oh, I don't know, Shakespeare or, or, or whatever. There's an infinite pot of talented people before us. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you could even say, oh, Elon Musk. But no, no. Elon Musk would just be a bloke who just happened to be a, a genius. But he won't be a genius when you meet him. He'll just be having a cup of coffee or something. So, no, <laughs> never, never meet your heroes. <laughs> Excellent. I love I love your logic. I love your logic. Kevin, it's been wonderful. I've really enjoyed our chat. Um I think those tips uh, for people in terms of what they should be focusing on the next few months are absolute gold. Uh, and I'm sure people will take a lot a lot from that. Uh, so that was brilliant. And yeah, hopefully and we'll people, be seeing one another again at some point soon. I, let's let's do it. And in the meantime, dental folk look after each other, okay? There's there's enough out there. Be be kind to each other, okay? And you'll be fine. That's a lovely message to finish on. Cheers, Kevin. Look after yourself. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dentology, where we discuss the business of dentistry. If you like what you heard, please do subscribe where you found this episode. That would be amazing. And also follow us on Instagram.